I'm serial entrepreneur Tracy Syfax, um, author of the um, award-winning autobiography From the Block to the Boardroom. But I grew up most of my life here in Trenton, New Jersey. Um, suffered through a lot. My only brother was tragically killed by a truck um, and uh, when he was nine and I was eight years old. As a single parent, my mother, I, I knew it just, just tore apart. She went through something after that. And life was never the same for either one of us. We ended up moving here from New Jersey, moving to Texas. My mother was arrested for marijuana and I spent my six months there um, in foster care. So those traumatic experiences began to happen to, um, for me at a very young age. As a young man, I began to struggle in school. I began to use drugs, steal cars, do all kinds of things at a very young age that eventually led to me um, uh, using cocaine and using heroin. I think I was around 14, 15 when I really started using heroin heavily. And then I had to support my habits. I became a drug dealer like so many other young men caught up in that lifestyle, having to not only support myself, but support my mother who was also on drugs. I went and did my first jail sentence in the early 1980s. Spent about two years there, came home, didn't quite deal with my drug problem, end up staying home for six years, but going back to jail again. But this time when I went back, I had a wife. I had two kids that I left this time. So I really knew when I went in the last time that I had to change my life around. I had to make a pivot in my life because I was either heading for two places. That was either a lifetime in prison or being in a, in a, a six feet under in a grave. Because prior to me going to prison in 1988 for the last time, I was also shot while I was on the street. So I spent three weeks laying in a coma. So all those life changing experiences that I had to go through to only to bring me where I am today. So when I came home in 1993, I just made a vow to myself and my God, I wasn't going back. I was down Southern State Correctional Facility and an incident happened down there where my cousin um, had assaulted a police officer, a um, correction officer down there. My um, cousin panicked and he ran out the door. I kind of ran like telling him don't run um, they end up catching him in the yard, of course, and that ruckus, they grabbed me also. So they hauled both of us to the hole. Of course, I didn't assault anyone, so I don't know why I'm there, but when I woke up the next morning, I had charges. I had assault and officer charges. He had assault and officer charges. They ended up dropping the street charges on me, but they kept what they call the administrative charges and sentenced me to a year in solitary confinement. So I spent a year in solitary confinement for something that I did not do. Um, but that year in solitary confinement gave me an opportunity to read the Bible from cover to cover, not once, but twice. It gave me an opportunity to hear what my grandmother was telling me a couple of months before I went to jail for the last time when I visited her house after I had come out of the hospital from being shot. She said, Tracy, listen, I can only pray for you. She said, God is going to find you in your darkest hour. And she said, only then will you truly realize who you truly are when I was in solitary confinement. Those words just kept repeating over and over again. But I knew when I came out of solitary confinement in the beginning of 1993 that I was a changed person. I just knew that that was not the life that I wanted to continue to live. All those things I went through, God saved me. And I realized that. And he put me here for a purpose. So it was through my faith was how I got through it. I could sit here and list many of things that I've gone throughout my life that I've had a life lesson than I actually learned through. Whether it was uh, uh, the divorce that I went through uh, of my 33 year marriage to my childhood sweetheart, whether it was being diagnosed with cancer in 2011 and being able to overcome that. Being able to go through all those things, survive it, and not only survive it, but thrive. I count all those as life lessons that I learned from on the streets. I tell people all the time, one of the most volatile places to ever go into that you've never been to is being thrown into a prison system. Being able to adapt and learn how to survive at seven years in prison gave me the opportunity to learn how to do that in real life on the street. We all are created to be here to do something. Far too often, we just need to find out what, it, what that is. Normally, it's something that we're very, very passionate about. Find what you're, uh, what you're passionate about. And, and I can tell you that you would never ever work a day in your life. I found what I was passionate about through my life experience. I love teaching. So having the ability to share that gift that God has given me through all my life experiences and through my successes now as a successful entrepreneur gives me that ability to transfer that. 
If possible is always possible. Just know that in this world, we have the ability to do and to be anything we want to be. Even a former drug dealer, drug addict can go from the, the, the crack house to the White House. And it's just that easy. But you got to believe. Mm -hmm.